What are we doing? We are here with Space Doctors. Mm -hmm. We are beginning the process of organizing the brushes. We purchased the vessels for said brushes. Our friend EJ made an amazing point that people want to know how I think about organizing the brushes and why would we organize them in a specific way. I'm a home organizer. I am here helping the lipstick lesbians <laughs> get their massive, impressive collection in order so that it's easy to work with. <laughs> <The> impressive collection. <laughs> Let's get into it. We're going to start with brushes. Tell us about the like it though and the dividers because I liked these. Yeah, so one of the tools we picked up to help ourselves organize are these like it bins that have these little adjustable insertable dividers. As categories emerge, we can adjust per size, which is satisfying and modular. This is a double vanity. So Christina has to have access to brushes too. Just like EJ sitting next to Alexis. Exactly. <laughs> we need to make sure that we each have kind of a core set in our little baskets. And now these baskets also will be functioning in a way that helps me take my dirty brushes over to the sink to wash them, which I love to do with my brush dock. And we're gonna make a separate video about this, but shout mm. out, this is one of our beauty queens. I know. She's amazing. How do you organize your brushes then? The size of the brush is usually dictating where you're using it on your face. When I look at my brushes, these are ones I reach for on the daily. I do also have companion kind of skincare that I'll use primers with. I start by thinking about complexion and I go in the category or in the order of how I use things. Usually for skincare application, I will gravitate towards my skincare brushes. What makes a skincare brush a skincare brush? The fibers. Okay. The way that the fibers soak up the products. Skincare products are usually more wet. And also you have uh, an intuitive design in something like this, for example, which has a little hole or a reservoir. So it can carry product. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is gonna hold our serum for us. Christina doesn't love to use skincare brushes, but in case she wants to, we can give her one. Maybe I'm just not using it because it's not organized. <gasps> <laughs> you know? That is like a main goal of organization is ease of use. It we're is. creating ease of use in the system. We're reducing the friction in the system so that you're not digging and hunting for the thing you need. Exactly. On the fly. So I'm placing these in the same order and I'm sequencing them out step by step. Next, we would start to enter the land of either concealer or foundation. The pinnacle foundation brush is definitely a go-to. It's the shape of a triangle. They are shaped this way to reach every single crevice of your face. Mm. But also they have a guiding, I call this the skunk line, the bristles and the fibers that are white. Those are designed for you to use the product and the density and how close these are put together. This specific element, the closeness, is what can help this brush, in particular, the Anissa Pinnacle, function as a sponge would in that you can press in mm. or you can spread. Christina always has less brushes, it's hilarious. And these cubbies are gonna be your primaries and then over here maybe we'll have Ex your secondary use that's less frequently I mean. accessed. Yes. I think we should have, yeah, a dedicated receptacle for the dirty brushes that's oh. outside of this world. That okay. makes it easy for them to be taken away in one little canister. A question I have as an organizer is, is any of this prunable? Like are some of these <gasps> brushes have their relevancy? You know, do you hold on to some just out of attachment? Certain brushes I would say I would use. I would maybe put them in a zippered case and I would maybe give them to my nieces. Okay. This is where things get complicated. Okay. Though. I'm stoked. This is all new to me. I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah. With this broken brush, is it something we can say goodbye to because it's broken? <gasps> no, because the fibers of this okay. are just phenomenal. <laughs> As a content creator, yeah, you I want to be mindful though too of certain categories of budget. So like I don't ah. use my real technique brushes every day necessarily because I have different quality brushes. But if I'm using a drugstore product, I need to make sure this drugstore product is working right. with the drugstore brushes because that is going to be what my budget friendly beauty queens need. Right. So you're needing a larger collection than most because you're yes. doing experimentation, you're doing testing, you're doing demonstrating. Exactly. Here's an example of this company Make Beauty. Their brushes feel this. Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> it's it's way heavy, big. it's satisfying, mm -hmm. it feels like a nice thing. I have quite a few face product brushes back up. Okay. Loose powder, wonderful. This is Rose and Ben. Rose and Ben is a content creator on the platform. She has lots of brushes. I actually have like three of Rose and Ben brushes that are my favorites that I use. I do love her foundation brush, but I find I, I tend to gravitate towards more the triangle shapes and something a little smaller, but this would make it into the face category, okay. wet. This is a highlighting brush, really cool, really angled. I've used this with my house labs highlighter a lot. Like a mohawk. Mm -hmm. So this will be a face dry brush. This is a rare beauty foundation brush. This can go into a back 
backup. It's not something I'm going to be reaching for all the time. It's too similar to all the other ones that I have. Okay. Here's an example of a contour brush that's in the shape of a moon. I don't love this personally. The vision is to just sculpt on your cheek with it. Oh, so like it's like a one action. Mm -hmm. Now this is a great tool for beginners. Right. Who don't know where to place their contour, who maybe just want this to guide them and do the work for them. Right. Since I'm not in that category, I wouldn't gravitate toward this crescent contour. So is that something we can gift to a niece? We can possibly. We can also put it here because yeah, we may want to demonstrate. Talk about it. Okay, got it. This is kind of a unique brush. It's a kabuki style brush. Is this something I'm reaching for every day? No. What can you do with this? You can lay down powder. You can do your blush with it too if you want, but it is super dense. It does have that thin, thin little white skunky layer. Mm -hmm. That's where your product should live. This is a backup, not primary backup, like third backup. Okay. These are the Merit brushes. They blend out the Merit bronzers beautifully. I wouldn't do liquid blushes with this personally, just those creamy wax-based products. Look at how full this uh, this little section is. If I have a specific brand and I know I want to couple these together, mm -hmm. I'm tempted to do this. Sure. What's the urge to have it? easy access. Being able to consistently remember that I have them and being able to reach for them when I'm doing a drugstore evaluation, which is going to happen at least weekly. Oh, okay. Weekly, I would say, yeah, that makes the cut. We're still in face. We haven't even accomplished <laughs> that goal. This is a duplicate of my Rose and Ben foundation brush. So we're going to put this in our backup. What do you think this is for? <sighs> Setting powder? Oh, As a person who doesn't do makeup. So That's my guess. this is a UK based brand, Otis Batterby. This fiber is totally different than any of the fibers I have. And it would be like a liquid foundation application. Personally for me, I want to keep this to have it, yeah. but I haven't used this style of a gesture enough to have fallen in love with it. It's like a mood. You might be in the mood to feel dainty in that Right. Way. It's like, a, it's a whole different experience. So okay. this is going to kind of live in the branded backup land. Sure. And now we have my like original brushes before becoming an influencer. Okay. <laughs> that's what this is. So that's, that's what this is. Here. It's like, OG brushes. This is an Ita brush. God, I forgot about this. I love this brush. This has to be in the primary. A great brush because it's flat to go in in detail with. Mm. So she's making the cut. Great. She's a specialty brush. So this is great. We're finding some things that were buried and they're, we are. they're getting new life. They're getting refreshed. <laughs> they're coming to the fore again. Do I need my NARS classic blush brush? No, because I have my pro blush brush. Would Christina benefit from having this? No, she has the Cosas. Does it need to live here? No, it can live in a bag. Up. Great, that's a great system of assessment. Hero of this putty applicator brush is that you can scoop with it, but you can use this for more than just elf putty. And I don't have anything else on the entire vanity with a little scoopy system. So she's gotta be present in attendance. Got it. I just put the little dividers in. I've done double dividers, one at the lower juncture and one at the upper juncture, because we're about to put some skinny yes. brushes in here and I don't want them slipping and sliding. Oh, you did too. That's did. clever. Yeah. See, I would have never known how to do that. That's too. so smart. It's unique to the like it system yes. because you have the holes everywhere. Yes, yeah, so you can put them That's at whatever so height, whatever cool. distance. Now we have eye. Okay. Of my favorites for the eye category that I'll reach for very consistently. These are half magic brushes. The special nature of this brush is that it's shaped in this triangle and it's really dense, but long enough that at the tip it's tapered. Mm. So I can create a crease and blend. I'm only getting the tapered tip when I lay it down flat. But when I want to load it up and really put product on, I have this on whole side. surface. So it's done very intensely. So I reach for these often. Then we have our domes. Domes are your best friends when it comes to blending. I'm reaching for a dome when I'm doing my crease or when I want to lay product down in a loose way. And yeah. these all, to me, are living in the same world. Rose and Ben, she did a slanted liner brush. Makes it really easy to do exotic eyeliner with. All the brushes that we didn't know we needed. So many brushes. It's, it's a little crazy, isn't it? It's madness. I mean, if this is your craft, these are your tools, and it feels good to reach for a plethora of them if you're having specific urges. And it seems like in your craft, you're having specific urges. I do. It's kind of sick. Uh, this is just grazing the surface. <laughs> this is good. This feels great to me. Cool. Like, this is how I would reach for them. Good. This is an eyebrow brush. What does that feel like? That's dense tight and bristly. Mm -hmm. This is to do a very specific type of deposit with powders that have some waxes in them to do your brows with. So this would be in the eyebrow land or specialty eye category. Technicalia. Now I'll say if you were like the average, just sort of like personal makeup doer, I'd be like, that's true. Choose between these. You have to choose between these. And I would sort of press you into it and your gut would tell you which one you like better. But because this is your craft. Yes. 
you're a makeup artist, it gets elaborate. I'm saying, okay, you see technical differences here and you're using them both, so they're staying. This one is a little, oof, She's she's been left. It's this we can discard. What's the criteria? How can you tell? Why it's, is this the end of the it's life? It's lost of its shape completely. I used it a lot, but it's just lost its shape. There was a product on it that it did not like and it's just, we've lost her. Okay. It looks ha ragged. Goodbye. Here, I'll take it. Clears the zone. <laughs> we've come down to like, the final, this is it. So satisfying. Mm -hmm. Double ended, this is face, good. I didn't have one in my section. Christina had one in hers. Now, just to be very clear, I didn't necessarily know what vessels I was gonna use or how I was gonna do this. And we discussed this in our first session of like the ways that this can happen and how important it was to have separation and organization. And we've done ourselves a favor by gathering more vessels than we're ultimately gonna use with intent to return so that we have at our fingertips during this process everything that might be handy and we're not like stopped midway by wishing we had something that's not here. Oh, look at this empty cup. We're on to the last handful. An eyebrow brush in the real techniques world. This is a Japanese foundation brush. She's going in primary. Little baby kind of in-betweener brush specialty. Can use it in so many different ways that lives there. Wow, yay. We did it. <laughs> How do you feel? I feel like I can't wait to now organize the rest of the makeup. This feels so good, but I also feel like if I don't wash these brushes right now, I'm gonna have an aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's organize the rest of the stuff. So how's it going? What we get to? We've made a lot of progress. <laughs> It looks great. Yeah. Still working in the progress. I mean, this was filled before. Wow. This feels so fresh and so clean. I know. It's so fresh and so clean. <laughs> it is. Categories. Can we give you a mini tour? Yeah, yeah. What's the tour? Skincare, foundation, concealer, correctors, powder, highlight and bronzing. We have a lot of work to do still. Cream blush, powder blush, liquid eye, eye palettes, some handy tools, tweezers, etc. Brushes, primary brushes, frequent, frequent brushes. There's so much more. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about this, Alexis? I am so excited because it's so much more functional. And what my and section? Well, your section is a whip. My section is empty. Look how 